Greetings, uh, assalamu alaikum. Uh, this is uh, Patrick Mehdi O'Neill from Taif uh, Digital Institute. Uh, today we're doing a very short uh, video, just an introduction on the Islamic finance uh, qualification. We're going to be giving training on this course, and this is just going to be a short video giving you an overview of Islamic finance qualification from the Chartered Institute of Securities and Investments, and why this is something you should, you know, you should cons uh, uh, consider. So first off, a little bit of introduction about the uh, CISI uh, themselves. The CISI is a UK professional uh, body and mainly it specialises in the investment uh, industry. So it's the leading professional body in the UK for the investment industry. And one of the advantages of the CISI, it has a global presence. So its qualifications are recognised literally across the, across the globe. Uh, and another big advantage is uh, now for doing exams, they offer remote uh, invigilation. Of course, obviously, with what has happened with the, um, you know, the COVID the pandemic, exam centres have had to close in certain areas, etc. More difficult for people to go out and do the exams. So as a result, they introduced a remote invigilation. I myself have personally tried, uh, tried it twice so far. It is absolutely brilliant. Okay. You could be sitting in Islamabad, Lahore, Karachi, wherever you could be sitting, and you can do the exam at home. So you can do a UK professional exam, which is recognized across the world without having to leave your, your home. It is a fantastic uh, facility. Um, they're the main examining body for investment-related exams, and they offer a unique range of exams focused on the international marketplace. So this is the important thing about the CISI. Even though they're a UK professional body, and of course they offer many you know, UK-focused uh, uh, exams, they offer a huge array of international exams as well. So and indeed what you'll find in some parts of the world their qualifications are both mandated and recognized by regulators. So, for example, in uh, UAE, uh, in Oman, in Saudi Arabia, in various places and in India even, their qualifications are both mandated by the regulator uh, and recognized uh, uh, as well. Um, they also do an extensive uh, continuing professional development program. So when you do an exam with the CISI, your, your journey doesn't end there, okay? You, you become a member of the CISI for, for a year uh, and you can access their CPD learning program. So you can learn er everything from, you know, investments to blockchain to derivatives, et cetera. So this is a fantastic learning uh, portal. Uh, they've got over 45,000 members in over 100 different uh, countries. Um, this shows you the uh, the range of the different uh, you know qualifications that they cover. So everything in terms of you know uh, investments, uh, corporate finance, regulation, compliance, and of course the one that we're interested in today is Islamic finance, the one that we're going to uh, talk about. Uh, this gives you um, uh, an idea of the internationalism of the CISI and how well their exams are recognized throughout the world. This shows all their exam centers uh, throughout the world. So obviously a huge amount in uh, Europe, Africa, Asia, the Middle East, etc. So they really have a global uh, footprint. So if you get a CISI qualification from the CISI, whether it's in Islamic finance or investment, et cetera, this is going to be a qualification which will be recognized uh, globally. Uh, a good question you ask is, you know, why consider the Islamic finance qualification? So we'll run through quickly a couple of reasons, and then I'll give a summary of uh, some of the reasons why uh, one should cover, uh, one should consider the Islamic finance qualification from the CISI. First of all, okay, this has won uh, awards, okay, it's a very, I've already co covered the CISI and how well it's recognized throughout the world, etc. It has also won awards uh, as well. It's Sharia compliant. So uh, the, the book is very much based on IOFI standards. IOFI is the Accounting and Auditing Organization for Islamic Financial Institutions. It is basically the global standard setting body for Islamic finance. So again, recognized throughout the world. So uh, this has been put together by you know, a panel of experts and reviewed by Sharia scholars and so on. Uh, uh, another uh, very important aspect, uh, it gives you the, the general principles of Sharia, the Islamic law, okay? 
specifically, we're interested in the fiqh al muamala, okay, which is the law of transactions and their application to the Islamic banking and finance uh, space. It examines the practices used in Islamic financial markets and the principles behind uh, investment uh, selections. Uh, this is also supported by the Central Bank uh, of Lebanon, uh, Banque uh, du Liban, uh, awarded jointly by the CISI and L'Ecole Supérieure des uh, Affaires. So as I said, this has got a very uh, global recognition throughout the, uh, throughout the world. You can also as an opportunity to obviously increase your CPD, your continuing hours of professional uh, development. Uh, when you do the Islamic finance qualification, you get free membership of the CISI for one for one year. And as I said, that gives you access to a whole range of uh, different uh, benefits, including their uh, professional refresher and learning uh, courses. And of course, you get to you know, put some letters after your name uh, as well. In summary, OK, I would say there is two key reasons for uh, for you to consider the Islamic finance qualification from the CISI. One, one is just in terms of knowledge, okay? Uh, knowledge to increase your knowledge, to increase your ilm, okay? So this is a, you know, a duty upon us, okay? Those of us who are Muslim, this is a duty upon us anyway. Uh, what is taught in the schools, okay, and in the colleges and the universities is mainly conventional finance, okay? So most people, okay, when you grow up, they know very little about Islamic finance and how it actually works. This qualification, leaving aside the career aspect of it, which I'll, I'll turn to in a minute, this qualification is a very practical qualification. It teaches you how Islamic finance works. How do the Islamic finance contract works? How does uh, you know, Islamic banking work, uh, investment and asset management work, and Islamic insurance? All these topics are covered in the IFQ. So it's a very, very practical, uh, very, very practical uh, qualification. The second, of course, key reason, which is maybe the one which will attract uh, a lot of people to, to study disqualification, is for your career advancement. When an employer is looking at anybody's, you know, uh, you know, to see about hiring someone, there's three key things that they will look at. They will look at qualification, skills and experience. So if you have the uh, CISI IFQ, that helps to tick the box in the qualifications field. So this will put you at an advantage, of course, to those people who do not have this qualification. And no matter what part of the world that you're actually in, because this is coming from a UK professional body, which is recognized throughout the world, okay, you will have a qualification which is uh, globally recognized. So this is going to be a huge advantage to you. Uh, in your uh, in your CV, uh, let's turn to the uh, to the qualification itself. A good starting point uh, is to think about the exam. Okay, we want to uh, in our training course we we really want to give people the maximum opportunity, the best chance of passing this exam, and hopefully first time round. That's what we want to achieve. Uh, the exam duration is two hours is 100 multiple choice questions, 100 multiple choice questions in two hours. This might seem a bit challenging, but from experience, this is generally not a, this is not a problem. The questions are fairly short and, you know, to the, to the point. There's no negative marking. So if you don't know the answer, you can at least make a guess and have a 25% chance of getting the correct answer. The pass mark is 70%. So the pass mark is relatively high. This reflects the fact that it is a multiple choice exam. The current pass rate is 55%. So nearly half the people who do this exam, they, unfortunately, they fail it. Why did, what is the main reason that people fail this exam? It's because of a lack of uh, proper uh, preparation. And I think a second aspect as well is the Islamic finance qualification, most people, they grow up learning about conventional finance. So when we're talking about Islamic finance, this is really something very, very different from the conventional finance space. So this often is people have difficulty really in absorbing and understanding the concepts behind uh, uh, Islamic uh, finance. Uh, the total qualification time, so this is the recommended hours of you know, study preparation that the CISI recommend that you need to put in place uh, for, uh, for studying for this exam, so you are prepared, well prepared for it. 
In terms of the course itself, it consists of nine uh, chapters. Uh, here you'll see in the various columns, this shows you the number of questions for each uh, chapter. So you can see that the chapter on banking is the biggest chapter in the book or the most important in terms of the exam. This also here shows you the number of pages, okay, that you will have to read per chapter. So obviously some chapters are bigger than others. And this shows you the number of uh, pages that you have to read for each exam question. This is useful. So you can see that in chapters one and two, which are very introductory type of chapters, you have to read a lot and it doesn't cover so much of the exam. I mean, the first two chapters only cover five questions in total. But from um, in terms of uh, the most important chapter out of all of these, the most important chapter is chapter four. Even though it doesn't account, it only accounts for 15% of the exam, it is the most important. Because in chapters one and two, we call these fairly introductory type chapter. Chapter three, we're learning the fundamentals of Islamic finance, or what I would call the principles, rules, and prohibitions uh, that we find uh, in Islamic finance. And chapter four is really the heart of the course. This is where we're learning about Islamic finance contracts and structures. This basically explains how, you know, you know, how do the Islamic banks, so how do they make Islamic financial uh, products? How do we structure them? So this is key to understanding the remainder chapters. So most of the rest, once we get to this stage, most of the rest of the chapters are all about how are these applied? How are these contracts and structures applied in banking, asset management, sukuk or Islamic bonds and the kafal. So chapter four, if you understand chapter four, these subsequent chapters will be easy and straightforward uh, for you. So this uh, gives you a, a brief overview of the uh, Islamic finance qualification from the CISI. Uh, we hope that you found uh, this uh, short uh, introduction to uh, Islamic finance qualification uh, useful. And we inshallah look forward to seeing you on one of our training courses. Thank you very much.